Nvidia just released their latest quarterly figures. The earnings call is also over, so I noted a couple of things from that as well. By the way, for those of you that are working at Nvidia, please, for Christmas, do send the CFO a new microphone because this earnings call was horrendous, horrendous. Anyways, an excellent quarter by Nvidia, truly remarkable. Again, I don't think we're going to see anything like this ever again with regards to Nvidia. The growth that we're seeing since 2023, well, the end of, well, since ChatGPT got launched, basically, it's, it's insane. It's insane. We're going to talk about that. I have some visual stuff I want to show you. Currently, the stock is down 1.3%. It was down closer to 4% at one point. I mean, other than that, what's there to say, right? If you look at some pricing metrics, forward PE 42.1 times, EV2 sales 22.9 times, EV2 EBITDA 36.2 times. Of course, it's not the cheapest ones out there, right? It's actually on the high end of things, but you're buying... You're buying a tremendous business, right? You're buying a business that is now at $3.5 trillion in market cap and yet somehow still manages to grow revenue and EPS so much faster than smaller companies. This is, again, this is unheard of. And by the way, at the time of making this video, the average analyst price target still sits 10% higher than the price we're at right now. Now, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Price target upgrades, downgrades remains to be seen. Now, all in all, despite this stock going up, what, 10x in the last couple of years? If you look at the Ford PE, EV to EBITDA, price to sales, price to free cash flow, and price earnings to grow, that's at 1.19. That's really not that expensive. But all the others, compared to its five-year mean, only price to sales is higher. All the rest is basically the same as the five-year mean and even a little bit lower when you look at EV to EBITDA, despite the huge rise in stock price. Why is that? Well, that's just because the business has done something that we have never seen before. That's suddenly accelerating like there is no tomorrow. So enough of me blabbering around. Let's go and look at the earnings report. We already covered Snowflake. If you missed that video, that will be in the top right corner. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we really appreciate it. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and end up in comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So as always, we're going to start with a major overview for those of you that just need or just want to look at that. So we've got here stock market nerd on X with the beats and misses, in this case, no misses in this overview for the quarter and for guidance. Again, a very, very good quarter. If we then go and look at consensus gurus, we can see that this small miss that he's got here comes from operating margin, a miss for the next quarter by 37 basis points. All the rest, I mean, beats quite comfortably. Now, zooming out a little bit, and this is why I said this is something that we are not going to see ever again, in my opinion, maybe Tesla. Maybe Tesla, if robot taxis do become as big as expected, then maybe, maybe that might be the case. But I mean, look at what has happened with compute and networking revenue, right? Since Q4 2019, it's up close to 3,000%. I repeat it, since Q4 2019, Computer networking revenue increased by close to 3,000%. That's insane. While gaming graphics revenue, right, that's only grown by 94.15%. NVIDIA was previously known only for that. And now look at the difference. Incredible. Then as for free cash flow and total revenue, that's in the last 12 months, not including the last quarter, but you can already imagine what's going to happen with the next two bars here. Again, huge, huge reacceleration in growth of course after that low point here at the end of 2022 this was basically nvidia's moment of hmm you doubt me hold my beer and since then well <laughs> since then it's been it's been incredible it's been incredible so right now what do we get well we get data center revenue of 30.7 billion dollars gaming 3.27 billion dollars and that's nice to see that it continues to reaccelerate quarter after quarter, professional visualization. To be honest, I thought this segment would have grown much more, but okay, it has grown quite a lot since Q4 2023. So, okay, we'll give them that. 
auto continues to go up quite nicely and so for the quarter total revenue came in at 35.08 billion dollars of course beating the analyst consensus numbers quite comfortably so Jensen started off by saying the age of AI is in full steam, propelling a global shift to NVIDIA computing. Demand for Hopper and anticipation for Blackwell in full production are incredible as foundation model makers scale, pre-training, post-training and inference. AI is transforming every industry, company and country. Enterprises are adopting agentic AI to revolutionize workflows. Industrial robotics investments are surging with breakthroughs in physical AIs and countries have awakened to the importance of developing their national AI and infrastructure. And for those of you that are dividend investors, I mean, look at this, look at this. Nvidia will pay its next quarterly cash dividend of one cent per share. Of course, there was a 10 to one stock split, so that would have been 10 cents, but still, this is quite, quite funny to look at. We did also get some information in the note from the CFO with regards to Blackwell. So they said the following, or she said the following. We completed a successful mask change for Blackwell, our next data center architecture that improved production yields. Blackwell production shipments are scheduled to begin in the fourth quarter of fiscal 2025 and will continue to ramp into fiscal 2026. We will be shipping both Hopper and Blackwell systems in the fourth quarter of fiscal 2025 and beyond. Both Hopper and Blackwell systems have certain supply constraints and the demand for Blackwell is expected to exceed supply for several quarters in fiscal 2026. And so for the quarter, if we look at the rest, so gross margin was 74.6%. That's down from the 75%, but we've known about that. They alluded to the fact that we're going to go a bit closer to the 70% as Blackwell starts to ramp up. And then by the end of 2025, it's expected to be back closer to 75%. Operating expenses increased 9% quarter over quarter and 44% year over year. But I mean, look at this operating income is up 17% quarter over quarter and 110% year over year. And then diluted earnings per share up 16% quarter over quarter and 111% year over year. All that on a gap basis. Looking at the segments and the platform, so computer networking is up 112% year over year and 17% quarter over quarter with graphics up 13% quarter over quarter and 16% year over year. Now in data center, there are two things. There are compute, and that's up 132% year over year and 22% quarter over quarter and networking. Now networking is up 20% year over year, but down 15% quarter over quarter. So I'll have to go over the earnings call to see if I missed something when it comes to networking. Maybe there is some competitiveness issues, ethernet and stuff like that. Let's see if you know it. Let me know down in the comment section below. Gaming, we've seen that's up 14% quarter over quarter, 15 year over year. Automotive, we've seen some nice growth there, 30% quarter over quarter growth and 72% year over year. Before ending, I wrote a couple of things here. So Blackwell demand is staggering. That's what I said. Demand exceeds supply for several quarters. They already shipped 13,000 samples of Blackwell in Q3. They're in full production and will deliver more Blackwell than anticipated in Q4. H200 is experiencing the fastest grow and ramp in Nvidia's history, and they will have low 70% margins at the start of 2025, but that will grow back to around 75% at the end of that year. So maybe maybe that's one of the reasons why the stock is down a little bit. Maybe the market was expecting a little bit more for Q4 and maybe a little bit better for margins as well. But I mean, to be honest, how greedy can you be, right? This is, this is again, jamais vu, as they say in French. So yeah, overall, what we're seeing here is a stock that's been close to all-time highs in the last couple of days. I mean, it's been at all-time highs last week. So, okay, now we're closer to the 20-day moving average, which sits at $141.3, the 50-day one at $134, and the 200-day one still much lower at $109. RSI is quite high, but not overbought. Overall, if you're an NVIDIA shareholder, I mean, just sit back and relax. If you're thinking about opening a position in NVIDIA, just think about what this company has to do in the future to justify today's price, right? 
because if you're buying today, you're buying because you think that it might continue to grow extremely fast. Of course, I don't think it will grow 90%, 80% year over year, each and every year, right? But I mean, you have to justify the price, right? If you are buying today, not saying if you bought a year, two years, three years, 10 years ago, I mean, you're probably retired by now, but those that are thinking about opening up a position, this company needs to grow and continues to grow, especially free cash flow. So yeah, can they do it? I mean, if anyone can do it, then it's probably Nvidia, right? But on the flip side, do you need to open a position in Nvidia right now or not? That's up to you. What's the upside? Well, on one side, you might say, oh, it's a $3.5 trillion company. How much bigger can it become, right? Well, yeah, I, we've probably been saying this since, well, since a trillion, since two trillion, since three trillion, and it keeps going up and up and up. On the flip side, you might ask yourself, okay, maybe I missed the boat. Maybe there are some other opportunities out there. I would agree with that as well. So it's really up to you. I have no position in NVIDIA. I had one, sold too early. Huh. Big mistake that I will not make again. Overall, I like to watch this company from the sidelines because I'm a big admirer. I'm a big admirer of Jensen One, of everything that they're doing. So congratulations to everyone that has been a shareholder of NVIDIA for quite a long time. That's all I have to say. Overall, that's all you need to know right now. If I see something that I missed, I will write it in the pinned comments. So keep an eye out on that. Do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe to all of that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.